Ah, stop. Right. Top tip. <laughs> Laugh all you want. <laughs> go. Oh God. Well, if you if you drop it, where's it gonna go? day here at Carrick but there's very little wind you know so unfortunately it means projects <laughs> oh. look you dropped something <laughs> oh, I dropped a washer Doesn't but the brolly saved it uh, to help me with this job, I actually bought we actually bought some ratcheting spanners, and they are great because they help you um, un undo nuts and stuff. The only issue is um, you need a lot of space when you're actually working in around the engine and things like that. They're 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 quite bulky, but they're great, um, you know, for when you've got space like um, that. So what I've done is I've taken the old bent one, not this one actually, the other one, and I've marked off on the rod a little, this, this one was just a little bit short, so I've marked it a little bit longer uh, where it needs to be, and I'm going to cut that uh, just there. I've left a nut on the rod so that if the threads get a bit bent I can straighten them up by just running the nut over them a few times, and I'll probably tidy it up with the end of the grinder. Now we've got a minor crisis, a very minor one I grant you, we can't find the goggles for the grinder so I've got my biggest glasses and I'm just pushing them right up onto my eyes so they're as shielded as I can get, the sparks should be going away from me so it shouldn't be an issue, this is the best precaution I can take and I've got the wind blowing that way so I've taken as much precaution as I can, let's get to it, the handle's in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky for me the handle's detachable. Right, we've been on board, we have reviewed the footage and we now have everything in the correct sequence. So. I'm just assembling it back the way we had it and I'm just going to lock this nut against the other nut. So You also took the opportunity to make a cup of tea though, didn't you? <laughs> of course I did. Good <laughs> <laughs> okay, God, what do you take me for? Of course I made a cup of tea. <laughs> Don't knock it kiddo, it works. <laughs> I know. Well, the training wheels are in place. Hey, I can move the swim ladder. And, yeah, they're fine. And that one, fine. But this bracket will need uh, fixing. But another day, another dollar. Do you know, when we first saw this boat, <laughs> I thought they were exhaust pipes. I thought we had twin exhausts on board. Yeah, and the reason we call them training wheels is um, they just remind us of those training wheels that you have on the back of a bike. For children. For children, so uh, that's why we call them the training wheels. But really what they are is because we um, have the dinghy here, um, it just means that it's a little bit of protection um, for, the, for the dinghy. <laughs> we just call them training wheels. Well, the letter 
catering for our uh, horseshoe boy has arrived so uh, we're going to be clever and we're going to go downstairs to uh, sort it all out because it's pretty cold up here <laughs> you're darn right it is <laughs> oh Bev you're getting the retro tape out I am indeed my days of being a Jedi are over no more lightsabers for me sadly <laughs> <laughs> I think we have far too much fun on this boat. I know, and it was so good as being a Darth Vader. Uh, no, you weren't Darth Vader ever. You What's were. What's the new uh, girl called? Um, she, her. She'll do. <laughs> anyway, um, this is retro tape. If you haven't seen it before, it looks fairly innocuous. It looks like a. a silvery grey set of hexagons it really doesn't quite i'm sure it doesn't look like much in the camera at the minute no it doesn't but do, at do, night do me a favor yeah turn the camera light on whoa girl <laughs> okay, turn it off again <laughs> Whew, that was a lot of, that was a bit crazy yeah so you've got the idea this stuff reflects any light that falls on it back the way it came and it is very very effective so it's going on the Horseshoe Boy, as well as a couple of other bits and bobs I'm going to put on here. Um, so what else have we got for um, the Horseshoe Boy? This tube contains secret lettering. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Salty Lassie's birthday present, a uh, Christmas present, isn't it, Bev? I guess it is. We're going to mark the boy with the boat's call sign and name, so that if ever this goes overboard or it's found at sea, at least they know what boat belongs to, you know? Um, it's just one of those things. Generally, if things can go off a boat, it's a good idea to have them marked with the boat's details. Uh, and just uh, just so that you know, uh, if you lose a dinghy, unless it's got its name on it, it is not insured. Yes, uh, generally speaking, insurers, if you haven't marked the dinghy as being tender to some sailing vessel which they've insured, then generally the insurance won't cover the dinghy. We lost one that way, so we know. <laughs> so what on earth are you putting on there, Bev? Vinegar, I'm going to eat it with my chips. <laughs> um, just, if you're going to stick things on, it's a good idea to have the surface nice and clean. And vinegar is usually a fairly good clean because it's a very, very mild acid. Um, it just means that I've got a clean surface with no oils or greases or anything like that. Um, it does get a bit fragrant afterwards, but that's just the way it is. But at least we're using cider vinegar because our horseshoe is going to be gluten free. Lucky us. Right. There, uh, Beverly's just sorting. Uh... Yeah, so I've got the retro tape on and I've got it on all sides, so it should be that it doesn't matter about that side because I'd expect it about to be torn a casualty, but I've got it on three sides. This is all the tape I had available. Um, it's got this nice bright white rope, of course, and um, if you're searching for somebody and you're using a torch at night, then it should come up looking rather like this. Yeah, looks... Uh... Yeah. So that should be pretty visible. It should be. And like you say, whichever way it, it lands, you should still be able to see whatever happens. Yeah. Right, lettering next. So you just talk to us about what you're doing, Bev. And the letters on. Uh, I've, I've positioned them where I want them to go and I'm just keeping an eye on them and I'm carefully, not carefully enough, um, trying to peel them. off the, uh, the backing paper. Sometimes you need to work them a bit to get them to come off the backing paper. But uh, I'm having a bit of a bit of an issue with this one so there comes the kitchen knife. Don't don't get don't get in a hurry with it. Don't get yourself rushed. It's definitely a time and job of patience, isn't it Bev? Totally. So obviously the first tool that you need to do for this job is patience, um, a little kitchen knife she's used already uh, and there's actually a little uh, smoother which she's just using her hand for at the moment yeah. but that actually came in the kit didn't it Bev? Oh this thing yes. Yeah that's a little smoother but Beverly's just using her hand at the moment. Yeah I'm just trying to make sure that the letters peel off under the transfer nicely. So what are you doing now, Bev? Just smoothing it out, making sure there are no air bubbles anywhere, and just working the glue so that hopefully it comes loose easily and doesn't stay on the backing paper. If it does, you've just got to be slow and patient. 
There's no other way to do this. So hopefully getting the first one to lie down is the biggie. Then just keep the paper flat. As flat as you can like I'm doing. And just uh -huh. roll it very slowly back. And here's my problem bit that I had the little issue with earlier. Oh, I can see it lifting just a slight. Yeah, well, it's got a slight crinkle in it. Nothing I can do about it. Yeah, the crinkle is there. We'll just have it now as long as we have this horseshoe boy. But this is what Salty Lass is getting for Christmas. So we're kind of like getting our Christmas presents in early. But... Yeah, well, you have to. You have to think about these things, but... What a great present for Salty Lass. Yeah. Her name on her horseshoe boy. Oh, Brill. And there we go. And we're done. It's just unfortunate on that uh, little corner of the uh, of the tea. Let's have a look at the tea. Hang on, I'm working on it. I'm trying to flatten it out. Oh, I can see. It's just got a tiny crinkle just in here. My standing rule about my boat applies. If anybody says anything rude about it, I throw them overboard. <laughs> right. And then we'll try recovery later. <laughs> <laughs> Will we? <laughs> right. So the last one I go on about that side there. Let's just see. Yeah, about there. Oh, this is going to look gorgeous. So I'm just going to work the glue on this, just see if I can get it to come off the, the backing paper. Just get a bit of heat into the glue before I start. Alright. Shall we give them a plug? In case you're wondering where we got it, it came from here. This is not a paid promotion, this is just where we got it. I wish it was a paid promotion because then they would have given us the letters and this for free, but it wasn't. Instead we stumped up cold hard cash that we earned ourselves. But that's where we got it from in case anybody asks. So Beverly, let's have a look at your final work. So we've got the salty lass on this side, we've got Call sign and MSI on that side, and um, we've got the retro tape on the top. And whatever you do, don't turn on the camera light. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so, Beverly, any hints and tips? Yes, um, when you're doing, I, I should have worked the glue more on this first one. Just to, I should have just rubbed it before I peeled the backing paper off. Um, and then I wouldn't have that little tiny imperfection there. But um, the rest of them I rubbed it and it came off well. Also, when you're peeling the letter off, peel it back really, really flat. I think we caught some video of me doing that. Um, and don't peel it straight backwards. I find it slightly better to peel it at an angle coming across because straight edged letters like this, if you peel straight, they all come off at once. And if one edge lifts, the whole thing lifts. Whereas you peel it at an angle, as soon as you get one corner down, the rest tends to stay down. So... Um, Peel it at a diagonal is probably better than peeling it lengthwise the way I started out doing it. When I got to the ones in the back over, over this side, I'd started peeling diagonally and it went a lot smoother. But it's on. Um, and for those of you who are even remotely curious about the whole thing, these are the same letters we have on the front of the boat and on the dinghy. And they have survived two years out there. No difficulty at all. And on the dinghy, it not only has survived being out there, but they're right down at sea level. They get splashed horribly with salt water. They get rolled up, put away, brought back out, reinflated, and they seem to be doing fine. So the letters seem to work. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to have a cup of tea and a biscuit. This is going to go back outside on the bracket, and that little job is now done. Yeah, sometimes we just do one job a day, don't we, Bev? Yes, um, at the risk of upsetting a certain elephant, and not you, the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time but not you else. <laughs>
this manky old rope has seen its end. Oh, well, come, I don't need to cut it. No. It'll just come undone. In, in, in. Uh -huh. 